Okay, guys, so in this lecture, we are going to start modeling a uh, male um, form, a male body, kind of a hero character. And the first thing we're going to do is we want to set up our scene with our reference plane. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into my front orthographic viewport. And I'm going to go to the Create tab. And I'm going to create a box. And I'm just going to kind of click as close to the origin as possible here. And I'm going to hold down my control key so that I make it completely square. And I'm just going to make it roughly 20 units by 20 units. So 10 grid units above, 10 below. <coughs> and then in terms of thickness, um, you can just make it whatever thickness you want because what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come over to the construction parameters for the box. And I'm going to um, change the height here value to something very small like a 0.01. So I basically want to turn this box, box into essentially like a plane. Okay, so the box is created. I'm going to change the color because I can't stand that color. Something more pleasing. And then I'm going to go ahead and go into um, the hierarchy mode. Uh, actually, I don't need to do that because I made this thing completely square. So scratch that. I'm going to select this uh, box. And I want to go ahead and zero it so that it's 100% zeroed on the plane. And the way I'm going to do that is by selecting it and hitting the W key for move. And then down here in these inputs, X, Y, and Z, I'm going to just type zero, zero, and zero and hit enter. And that's going to zero my plane. All right. So then the next thing I'm going to do here is... Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to navigate to my image that uh, you guys grabbed off the com, and in this case I want to grab uh, manfront.jpg and all I'm going to do here is I'm going to drag and drop if I can get this situated here here we go I'm going to drag and drop this image right onto that plane and when you see that plus key that basically or the plus icon that means that it's going to texture map that image onto that plane. And so when I drop it, look what happens. It texture maps that image right onto the plane. So that's our front reference plane. The next thing I want to do is I'm just going to move this plane slightly off the origin. So right now it's 100% on the 0, 0. And that's going to cause a few issues for us with selection and stuff later. So I'm just going to grab that plane and just move it slightly back uh, in Y off of the origin. And that's just gonna um, that's gonna help our selection tools uh, later, as you'll see. Then what I'm gonna do here is I need to make another plane for the side. We need a front and a side reference. So I'm gonna hit the E key for rotate. I'm gonna turn on the angle snapping here in the interface, and then I'm gonna hold down, press and hold down the <laughs> shift key, and I'm gonna drag and create a copy of this plane at exactly 90 degrees. And then I'm going to, under the clone options, I'm going to select object, copy, and say OK. And then what I'm going to do here is I want to grab another image from my set of reference images. And the one I'm looking for this time is called man side. So I'm going to grab that and I'm going to drag that onto that new copied plane that I just made. And now if I minimize this, we can see here that in the viewport I have both the front and the side for my uh, character that we're about to model. And at this point, you see that kind of annoying shadow there <coughs> that's basically blocking my reference image. That can be a little annoying. And what that is is that's the realistic shading under the uh, 3ds Max uh, viewport here. So whenever I'm doing modeling, um, that's fine for like showing someone your work and it looks kind of cool. Uh, but whenever you're modeling, that just kind of gets in the way. So I'm going to click on that realistic and I'm going to put it to regular old shaded view to get rid of that shadow. And then I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to select both of these planes, marquee drag, and then I'm going to go ahead and move them up so that the feet of my reference image are basically on the ground plane for the scene. All right, and then uh, we're basically set up uh, from here and we're ready to uh, start modeling. So now what we're going to do is we're going to actually start modeling our hero character here. 
And the way we're going to do that is we're going to start with a box, similar to the way we did the hand. And I'm going to start in the front orthographic viewport. And I'm going to get rid of that grid because for this assignment, the grid really doesn't help me that much. So, and then what I'm going to do is under the wireframe tab here, I'm going to make sure that I click that and click it to shaded so that I can actually see uh, the shaded view in here. I can see my reference image. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create under the create tab. I'm going to create a box. And I'm just going to go ahead and click drag here up by the shoulder down to about the waist. And I'm going to create my box. And then for uh, thickness, it doesn't really matter. Just, uh, you know, maybe about half as thick as it is tall, something like that. And then I'm going to right click to get out of uh, box creation mode. And then now what I need to do is I need to add some edge segments to the box. Um, so that it basically has the correct number of edges for the form that we're about to build. So we're about to build our base mesh and um, it's going to be super low low polygon just like we did when we started our hand model. So I'm going to go over to the modifier tab while I have the box selected and um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the segments and I think I want to turn on, I'm going to hit F4 for wireframe on shaded so that I can actually see the edges. I'm, and I'm going to hit the J key to get rid of that bounding box. So on width segments, I want two. On length segments, I want five. And on height segments, I want three. So if I, I'm going to just right click on this box and say, hide unselected and then you guys should have a box that looks like this so from the front view there should be one two three edges from the side view there should be one two three four edges and then from top to bottom if I'm looking at it from the front I should have one two three four five six edges all right okay once we have that we're ready to move on to the next step. So I'm going to right click in my on my mesh here and say unhide all. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the hierarchy tab and I want to make sure that uh, this box is completely centered on my center line. So what I'm going to do is under the hierarchy tab, which is the one right next to the modify tab, looks like kind of like a little squid, like an abstract or a Lego squid or something. And I'm going to go ahead and click on effect pivot only and then I'm going to click on uh, center to object and I just want to center that pivot on that box so that it's dead center on my object and then I'm going to click on the pivot button to get out of pivot mode and then once again I'm going to hit the W key and I'm going to zero this box so I'm going to hit the W key for move and then down here under XYZ I'm going to type zero zero and zero and it doesn't matter that it moves it down in Z uh, I just did that because I kind of want to hit that with a fire hose to make sure that all of those, <coughs> make sure that all of those coordinates are zeroed out. And then I'm just going to grab the transform and I'm going to move it up in Z again to get it up to where I need it to be. Uh, but now I know that everything's zeroed and zeroed on the on the center of the line. So now that I have that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the mesh. I know that it has the correct number of segments. I'm going to convert it to an editable poly. And then I'm going to start moving some points here in the front orthographic viewport. So I'm going to maximize my front orthographic viewport. I'm going to hit all X for X-ray. And that basically makes my, whatever mesh I have selected, it's going to make it semi-transparent. So now that I can see through it and I can see my underlying reference image for the model that I'm making, I'm going to go into vertex mode. And I'm going to select, see how you couldn't see if I, I was marquee dragging and you can't actually see it? That's because I thought I moved my plane back earlier, but I must have not. So let me turn the grid back on. Or I, I moved it the wrong way, one of the two. So make sure I got the right plane. Yep. So I'm going to move it back behind the origin here. And then if I go into select mode, I should be able to see. 
There we go. I, I moved it back. I guess I just didn't move it back far enough. So I'm going to move that back so that I can see my, um, my marquee selection. And now I'm going to select my uh, poly object here, my box. I'm going to go back into vertex <laughs> mode. And then I'm going to hit the R key for scale, and I'm going to non-uniform scale these three verts here. Actually, if you go into perspective view, it's more than three. It's uh, eight verts. And I just want to scale those down, at least in the front view, to line up with the neck. I'm going to then grab the next row, and I'm going to move it up. So I'm going to hit W, move it up to the top of the shoulders. Do nothing needs to be done, because that's the correct shape. And then I'm going to select marquee select the next set. I'm going to put those kind of right under the armpits. And those are also sized correctly. I'm going to grab the next row by marquee dragging. And then now what I want to do is I want to non-uniform scale these in. I'm going to move these up to be kind of right below here for the pectorals. And I'm going to scale those out a little bit. Something like that. And then I'm going to select another row here. And this one I'm going to move up a little bit to be about right there, right above the obliques, and scale that in. And then I'm going to grab the final row, and I'm going to move that up to be kind of right at the base of the obliques. And I'm going to scale that down a little bit. And then I'm going to grab, I'm going to marquee drag to select these uh, verts right here. I'm going to pull them down to kind of form like the crotch, basically, of our model. Okay, now that I have my mesh modeled from the front viewport, orthographic, I'm going to pop out to the side viewport, and I'm going to change this to shaded view so that I can see my mesh here. And <clears throat> now I need to distort these points to line up in the side view with my model. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is hit F4 again to show wireframe on shaded. I'm going to hit the J key to turn off the bounding box. And then I'm going to maximize the left orthographic viewport. And I'm going to start again with the top row of points and I'm going to move them into position here, kind of at the center of the neck. And then I'm going to scale those down. At this point, we could rotate these like this, but I don't want to do that just yet. Uh, eventually, we will rotate those, but for now, let's just leave them flat. And then I'm going to go ahead and select the next row. I'm going to move this into position. Scale it down a little bit in one axis. And then I'm going to do these, the next row. I'm going to move it back, scale it, and see how I'm just kind of lining it up with the side profile of my shape that I'm trying to make here. And then I'm going to grab the next set here. I'm just centering a bit, and then I'm going to scale it from the center. And then I'm going to come down here to the next one. And Move that into place. The next one, it's a little thin, so I'm going to scale that out a little bit, like so. And then the next one down, I'm going to move into position, and that's basically the basis of the where the leg is going to kind of grow out uh, from the torso. The next thing I want to do is I have this section here where I have the arm cut off, and what I want to do is I want to just click select these vertices here. And these are going to form kind of a, a rectangle, almost square, where the arm is going to grow out from the torso. All right. So it doesn't have to be perfectly square or anything. You're just trying to frame up that section for where the arm grows out of the torso, which is roughly, roughly about there. Okay, so it should look like that from the side. And then if I pop over to the perspective view, and I'm going to right click on the mesh and I'm going to say hide unselected, and then turn off the uh, x ray view by holding down the x key, uh, the alt key, and hitting x. 
just so we can kind of see what the mesh looks like in perspective. And right now it just really looks like a, almost like a Lego, Lego torso, nothing special. Okay, now that we have the um, mesh shape from the side and the front, we're ready to go ahead and start making the legs. So I'm going to minimize my left orthographic viewport. And I'm going to pop over here to the perspective view. <coughs> and in polygon mode, I'm going to hit the J key to get rid of this bounding box right here. J. In polygon mode, in the perspective view, I'm going to select one, two, three polygons right here at the base of the leg. And then I'm going to go ahead and extrude those to start creating what's going to become our leg. So I'm going to just click on the front orthographic viewport here. And under the editable poly, uh, with those polygons selected, I'm going to click on the extrude with the settings. And I'm just going to accept whatever it gives me because I'm going to position these at the vertex level later, so I don't really care what it does. So I'm going to accept this, and then I'm going to extrude it one more time. And I'm going to accept it right off the bat and say OK. Then I'm going to pop into my front orthographic viewport. And I'm going to go ahead and go into vertex mode. And I'm going to marquee drag around this set of vertices right here first. And I'm going to move them kind of close up like this, right at the crotch there. And then I'm going to select the next set of verts here, and I'm going to put them kind of close like that. And then I'm going to go to this set, and I'm going to move this one kind of up here at the base of the hip. And then I'm going to put this one kind of right there. So I'm basically creating the edges there for the deformation where the hip, hip joint moves and the leg kind of deforms from that position. So I need to have the edge loops there, and so that's what we just did. All right, so if I pop into the perspective view and I right click and I say unhide or hide unselected, we can see here that our mesh should be looking something like this. So if I turn off the x-ray view, I'm going to hold down the alt key and hit x. And we can see here that we now have the torso mesh kind of blocked out and we're starting the beginning of the leg here. So then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and extrude the leg further down. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on here and say unhide all. Go back into polygon mode. And then in the front orthographic viewport, I'm going to go ahead and extrude with the settings one more time. Again, I don't really care um, what I'm doing here, uh, what it does, because I'm going to change this uh, shape later. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and accept it. Uh, but I just realized that I missed a step, so let me cancel this. I want to, uh, before we go any further, I actually want to round out my leg. So I just realized I missed a step. Um, so before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and insert another set of edges all the way around here. And I'm going to do that by going into the edge mode. And I can select any of these edges right here on the front side of the body. And I'll just select the one here at the base of the leg. And I'm going to go ahead and click the ring to select the ring loop all the way around. And I want to add just one more edge in there. So I'm going to go ahead and go to connect. And I'm just going to add one edge loop and say OK. Now at this point, what I want to do before I continue extruding the leg is I want to knock down some of the boxiness that our model has. And I'm going to do that by first I'm going to just right click on the model and say hide unselected. And remember how we did this with the hand. We went in and we kind of removed. See how that right now this represents the neck portion of my model? See how boxy that is? We want to remove that as much as we can now because it becomes harder and harder uh, later down the stream to do this. So I'm going to just going to grab this uh, vert first. I'm going to pull that in. I'm going to grab this one next. I'm going to kind of pull that in a little bit. And then this one down to here. Again, I'm just going to kind of pull those in and pull those back. And I'm rounding off that mesh, so I'm just taking that hard edge off. And <clears throat> I'm going to carry that out all the way down here to the hip. And again, I'm going to move it in, move it in. So I'm just knocking that hard edge off. I'm going to come around here to the inside of the leg. I'm going to do the same thing here. Select these two verts. I'm going to move them in, 
move them in. And see how now my, my uh, thigh is starting to look more like a thigh. I'm going to come around here from the other side and grab these two vertices. I'm going to move them in also. And I'm starting to get a little bit more organic shape for my leg. Then I'm going to come over here to the last edge, which is this one. Grab these three. And I'm going to pull these down and kind of in and round that leg off finally. So we got the rounded leg. And then I'm going to carry this all the way up the back. Kind of bring it in and bring it down. Just make that form just a little bit more organic than boxy. And do it at an early stage where it's much easier to do this now than it is to do it later. I'm going to round that neck off a little bit. And that's about as much as I want to do for now. Okay. So now that we've, we've taken the hard edge off the model, we want to go ahead and uh, we're done with this other side of the model. We have this thing set up to be mirrored, <clears throat> and we just don't need this other, um, this other side of the model. So I'm going to go ahead and go into polygon mode, jump back to the orthographic viewport front, and I'm going to select all these faces here to the right of the mesh. So in perspective view, it looks like that. And I'm going to go ahead and delete those guys because they're done. All right, now that I've done that, now we can commence extruding the leg now that I've got it rounded. So see how we've got a much nicer rounded form. And the reason I did that at that stage right there was because if I would have extruded that leg while it was all boxy and triangular or, or uh, rectangular, that by the time I got all the way down to the foot, that would basically, that box would be modeled into my model. And it would just be a lot more tedious for me to model it out than it is for me to shape it kind of correctly right now and then uh, rather than do that later. So now that we have uh, the leg rounded off, I'm going to select all these polygons at the base of the leg. And I'm going to go ahead and right click and I'm going to say unhide all so that I can see my construction planes again. I'm going to hold down the alt key and hit X so that I can see through my mesh again. And then I'm going to pop into the front orthographic viewport. And now I can commence extruding my leg to uh, finish the rest of the leg. If you'll notice here, look at my edge lines. They're basically coinciding pretty much with these blue lines that I have on the right. And this, you can think of this as kind of your cheat sheet. I'm showing you where the loops should go so that you can kind of follow along as a guide. You don't really need as many edge loops as I have in the cheat sheet uh, for now, but you can kind of follow along. So I'm going to go ahead and extrude this one more time. I'm going to accept it because I don't care what it does uh, because I'm going to pull these points myself anyway. And I'm just going to grab these two and kind of make those a little flatter. Grab this one, make that a little flatter. Oops. And then I'm going to go ahead and rotate these guys a little bit. And I think I'm going to just split the difference here. So I'm going to uniform scale. I'm going to make that thigh. And I'm just going to cut, cut that plane in half between those edges and this edge. I'm going to then go back into polygon mode, extrude it one more time, accept it because I'm going to go into vertex mode. And now I'm going to put this edge loop right about here. And I can rotate that a little bit more. And then I'm going to uniform scale it down. And so I'm trying to get the, the, the meatiness of the thigh there, the thickness. And then I'm coming down here to the start of my knee. And so there's a transition zone there where the muscle goes into the thigh. And so I want an edge loop there to capture that shape. So I'm going to go back into polygon mode. And I'm going to extrude one more time. Accept it because I'm going to go straight into vertex mode. Now I'm uniform scale. This one I'm going to follow uh, pretty much directly along with my uh, edge loop formula here, my cheat sheet. And I'm going to position it kind of right up there at the top of that muscle, just past the knee. And then I'm going to go back into polygon mode and I'm going to keep extruding. And accept it, go into vertex mode. 
And then this one is basically this edge flow right here, that set of lines. And then go into polygon mode, extrude again, accept, go into vertex mode. And now it's this line that I'm making, so I'm going to rotate this one to be a little bit more flat. And it's that line that I'm putting in there. Right at the, kind of the middle of the kneecap. And then on uniform scale. And then I'm going to go back into polygon mode again, and I'm going to extrude it, say accept. Go back into vertex mode here. And now I'm adding this line right here, so I'm going to move this guy up. And that's kind of at the base of the kneecap, the bottom. And I actually like that rotation there, that angle is pretty good. And so I'm just going to scale it down to fit the leg. And then I'm going to create one more extrusion. And it's going to be this edge set right here. So I'm going to go into vertex mode. And that kind of starts the beginning shape where the calf muscle starts. And so it should look something like this from the front. But then when I pop over here into perspective view, we can see here from the side that if I right click and say hide unselected, it just, you know, totally looks like a a pair of dress slacks. <laughs> so what we need to do now is we've modeled it from the front, now we need to match it up against the side plane. And so uh, that's what we're going to do next. Okay, so now that we've uh, extruded from the front view, we're going to, before we get too far down on the leg, we're going to go ahead and shape from the side view now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on my mesh and I'm going to say unhide all so that I can see my side view. And then um, we haven't really shaped anything uh, since this uh, set of edges here. So I'm going to go ahead and select that row. And I'm going to go ahead and pop over to the side viewport, ortho or the left viewport orthographic. And now what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to non-uniform scale these verts here. And I'm going to position them with the thigh. I'm going to go down the next row. I'm going to first move it to center it up. And then I'm going to non-uniform scale it to match up. Same thing, next row, move it into position. These ones I'm just going to grab all the way down and move them into position. Okay, and then I'm going to select this row and I'm going to scale it down. And make it fit the leg here. Uh, the next row, I'm going to do the same thing, scale it down. Move it into position. Next row, scale down. And position it. Next row, center it up here on the leg. Non-uniform scale into position. And then finally this one, which is the start of the calf muscle. So now that it all lines up with the leg, we're going to keep on going down. So again, I'm going to pop into the perspective view and I'm going to click on polygon mode. And I just really wanted to make sure that uh, I had those six polys at the bottom of the leg selected. And now that I've confirmed that, I'm going to go into the front orthographic viewport. And I'm going to go ahead and extrude with the settings and I'm going to say accept. And then I'm going to go into vertex mode and select these vertices, move them into position, and move this up here, and then scale it. And now we, we start to see an issue here mm -hmm. where I can't really see how there's a vertice there. Mm -hmm. If I go to wireframe mode, if I hit the F3 key, you can see it's there, but I can't see it when I'm in perspective view. The reason for that is because my construction plane is actually intersecting this model. And you can see that if I go into the top viewport and if I go to shaded view, you can see here that there's my model and here's my construction plane, my reference plane, and it's actually intersecting the model. So part of the leg is behind the plane and that's why I'm not able to see that vertex. So from time to time, you may want to move your reference plane. And the way this works is because this is the front reference plane, I can move this thing 
in Y at will because that's not going to change uh, anything with respect to my model. So I can just slide that back behind my model. What I don't want to do is for the front one, I can't move it or I don't want to move it left or right because that'll throw off my uh, my precision where I modeled it specifically to be at the zero zero. So, but you can move it front to back and have zero effect on your reference. All right, and you're going to want to do that from time to time. So. I'm just going to scooch that back so that I can see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to go back into uh, selecting my model here, go back into polygon mode, confirm in perspective view that I have those uh, six faces selected. And then I'm going to pop back over to the um, front orthographic and I'm going to continue extruding. So I created that edge there. I need one more. So I'm going to extrude it again. Whoops. I didn't accept that, so it didn't take. So I could need to go to polygon mode, extrude. I just didn't click this little uh, green box and accidentally clicked that one, I think. So I'm going to say green to accept. And then now I'm going to go ahead and non-uniform scale these down. So that I'm basically, I'm creating the edges that are necessary to get that calf muscle. And I'm kind of doing the minimum number of edges uh, to accomplish that. And see how I'm matching that up with this edge my cheat sheet over here is telling me uh, I, I should have an edge loop there if I want to retain that that shape. So now I'm going to go ahead and go into polygon mode again and I'm going to extrude it one more time. I'm going to accept it, go into vertex mode, non-uniform scale, and I'm going to move these down to here kind of at the top of the ankle and scale that down. And then before I go any further, uh, I'm going to flatten these guys out a little bit now. Not all the way, but just a little bit more flat um, than that organic shape that I have going. The way I did was I select the vertices by marquee dragging all of them. I hit the R key for scale, and then you just non-uniform scale. And if you keep going, you can't go any more anymore. And that's when you know that the vertices are planar. So. I didn't want to go completely planar though, so I'm going to back out of that. I wanted a little bit of an organic form there. And I hate that bounding box, so I'm going to hit the J key to get rid of that. And I'll move that down. And then now what I want to do before I start building the foot out is I want to pop over here to the orthographic side view. And I want to make sure that I shape um, all these points in the side view so that uh, when I start modeling the foot, I'm optimized. So non-uniform scale again, get the ankle there. Okay, now we're ready to start modeling the foot. So in this class, for this assignment, something happened there. I must have uniform scaled that. I lost that. So I'm going to non-uniform that down. Okay, in this class for the foot, um, you are not required to actually model the foot out with the uh, articulated toes and everything. Uh, you can if you want, and many people have. Uh, just realize what's happening. I've, there's a hotkey, and I'm not sure what it is, but I keep hitting it, and I've changed my uh, scale mode from the regular method, which is uh, select and uniform scale to uh, squash and stretch. So I just I did that like five times before I figured that out. You may have done that. You just want to make sure you move that back to select and uh, uniform scale. And now that I can uh, have that scaled in one dimension and one dimension only, I can get that uh, ankle shape correct. All right. So for this class, again, uh, you can do articulated toes, meaning model the toes and everything if you want but you're not required to, so that's only extra credit. So I just want to show you guys how we're going to model the foot for this assignment. And we're just going to kind of go with like a, more of an abstract uh, version of it. So I'm going to select these six polys at the base of the leg here. And I'm going to extrude it. So I'm going to extrude it once. And not that much though. I'm going to take it back to something like that and accept. And then now I'm going to go into the front ortho. And now I do want to flatten this out a little bit more, so I'm going to select all those polys and I'm going to scale them down until I flatten them out. And I'm going to move them into position, so that's kind of like the beginning of my ankle here. 
And then now I'm going to go ahead and extrude again. Here, accept, extrude again, accept, and extrude again, and accept. And then, let's see how I'm looking from the right here. I'm going to extrude one more time. So extrude and accept. And then what I'm going to do is I have to go into, um, first I'm going to shape this from the front view, so here's my ankle. So I'm going to basically bubble this out a little bit on this side. Uh, on this side, that's looking okay. I could probably taper that in slightly. And then here, this becomes the bottom of the foot, so I'm going to taper that out a little bit. And then I'm going to go into the side view, and I'm going to start shaping this a little bit. So in this case, um, I could uniform scale these, but at, at this point in the game, that might actually um, work against me. So I'm probably just going to start pulling points here. So I'm going to probably I'm going to do these first two as a non-uniform. Move those into position. And then from here, I'm going to all non-uniform these, but then I'm going to start pulling points. So I'm going to move this, and I'm trying to model the shape here of the foot from the side. And I'm going to do it again. So this one's a non-uniform. I jumped again there with my explanation. Of I'm not pulling points yet, but I will be shortly. And then I'm going to grab these, move them down. Pull this down. And then I'm going to go into perspective view. And I want to grab all of these verts here at the front of the foot. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Uh, I'm going to do it. I was going to do it a different way, and I'm going to do it. So I'm going to select these three here, and these three here. <coughs> and now I can go ahead and extrude forward. So I'm going to say extrude. Say OK. Move those into position. I'm going to keep shaping this from the side. So that's kind of becoming the front of my toes there. And then now I can scale this up non-uniform. That's basically the uh, ball of my foot kind of right there. And then I'm going to go ahead and select these faces here and I'll extrude one more time bring that one back say OK <coughs> and then I'm going to go in here and pull some points here to get kind of a ball of the foot shape going I'm going to now right click on my mesh I'm going to say hide unselected and because now I need to do some modeling here see how I've got some concavity on the sides here. I need to fix all this. The foot basically on the sides is, is different. So I want to go in here and pull this out. This is where my ankle is. So I'm going to pull that out a little bit. 
uh, the Achilles heel this is going to kind of these can scale in so I'm going to grab those and I uniform those and then that's also my ankle on that side and then this one got a little concave so I'm going to grab these points here pull those out, fatten that out a little bit and then start to taper it in here pull this out and then for these guys I'm going to bring those forward a little bit because here I might want to actually do kind of a ball of the foot or I'm sorry uh, arch of the foot so I grab those and pull those up like that then I could grab these ones here and I could flatten those out if I wanted to until we have something that actually it's kind of like a footy you know like a pajama pant a uh -huh. <laughs> yeah like a onesie and we can sculpt that out uh, better later but uh, for now it's okay Okay, and then the last thing, that I'm going to accept that for now. That's a decent uh, booty. Um, I could extrude or uh, pull these out here to make like a little bit of a toe, a big toe. Uh, but then I'm going to go in, and your foot never, ever kind of points straight forward. If it does, it looks super weird. That's because when we stand, our natural inclination is to have the foot rotate out a little bit. And so you always want to do that. You want to model that into your mesh. So uh, it's, you know, anywhere from like a 20 to a 30, uh, 30 degree angle if you're like bow legged. Um, but like a 15 or a 20 degree pitch there at the foot always looks much more natural than uh, if you had that thing running straight forward. So that's what I'm going to do. And then I want to just uh, turn on unhide all. And I want to check this in the side view. So I'm going to select the mesh, all X for X ray. And I'm going to maybe. Pull these points down here a little bit to flatten that out and pull those in, something like that. And those looks like they could come in and that whole section can move over. And it's close enough for government work. So now we're going to go ahead and move on. And we're going to go to uh, the extrusion of the arm. Everything's looking pretty good. Now it's probably a good idea to select everything and say hide unselected. And we just want to take a little bit of a NURBS peek, a uh, NURBS preview of this, and maybe do some additional shaping here. So what I'm going to do is I'm selecting the mesh here. I'm going to go over into the NURM subdivision and say use NURM subdivision and I'm going to take a look at it. The leg's actually looking fairly natural even in its primitive state uh, so I like how that's working. One thing though that I notice immediately is that butt is kind of ridiculous right? There's like no butt. No butt right? <laughs> so what we want to do here is we want to fix that so I'm going to go ahead and do that a little bit. I'm going to work on that a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off that NURMS uh, preview so turn off the NERMS subdivision and I'm going to grab, it's basically these two vertices here and I'm going to just pull those out a bit and up and this one needs to come up a bit and if you'll notice something here it's kind of like we're, we've reached a limit we, we're missing basically a section of the model and it's because we need to add another set of edges down the center here and so um, I want to show you a little bit of a, a trick on this. So if I go into border mode and I sec select this border edge, so first thing I did was I just wanted to take some of the edge off of these verts here, so I pulled those in a little bit. See how boxy they were? I'm going to make those a little less boxy. 
All right, and then I'm going to go into um, edge mode, border edge mode. I'm going to select that border edge, which is basically a hole in the mesh. And now I want to extrude that. So I'm going to go into edge mode, and I'm going to say extrude. But look what happens when I do that. What the hell? It's kind of wacky. The reason for that is because the edit poly um, extrusion on edges is a little bit unpredictable and a little wacky. So I want to show you how to get around this. So I'm not going to accept that because that was stupid. And I'm going to go ahead and right click on this mesh at this point. And I want to convert it to an editable mesh. You guys may have accidentally done this uh, while you were modeling occasionally and said, why can't I find certain tools? And it was because you were using editable mesh instead of editable poly. They're both very similar in look and tools. Um, but the editable mesh basically um, has a, a much more friendly extrusion for edges. So I'm in the editable mesh and I go into edge mode and it selects those edges again. And now I'm going to go ahead and say extrude in here. And I'm going to increase it and look, that's much more friendly extrude. And I don't want to extrude that that much, so I'm just going to go ahead and say accept. And then now what I want to do is I'm going to go, I want to make all these planar. So I'm going to select, I'm going to convert this back to an editable poly now that I have my edges extruded. And I'm going to go into border edge. And I have two ways to flatten all these vertices out. I could again non-uniform scale in one dimension until they were flattened. Or I could select that border edge and go into the planar, make planar down here. And this tool is always contradictory to whatever your axis says, which is kind of non-intuitive. But if I were to do this based on the axis, I'd say make planar and I would use um, uh, Z, but I would be wrong. It's actually looking for X. So I guess the way you have to look at it is whatever axis is shooting perpendicular to the verts. And then you're going to go ahead and say make planar X, and now it's going to make all those verts planar. Then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go in, and I want to kind of re-zero all these vertices that make my center line. So I'm going to select all these vertices down this, the center here. And I'm going to turn back on everything, so I'm going to say unhide all. And I want to go into the front ortho. And I'm just going to move these points all over a little bit, like so. So that that's basically back to the center of my mesh. And then I can distort these back to fit. OK, now that I have that, and I can fix all this stuff later. Now that I have that set up, I have enough edges at the back of my model to continue modeling out that butt. So I'm going to say hide unselected, come over here. And see, I, I the whole purpose of this was so that I would have another set of edges so that I could make um, uh, the shape of the butt a little bit better. Oh, you know what I just noticed here? Oh, crap. When I made that planar, or when I moved those back, I probably did not have these edges selected. So let's hope that I can fix this, which I think I can. This is why you always got to watch what you're doing. Okay, got it all fixed up. So that's, uh, I need that edge all the way around. And then I've got these extra edges in here so that I can beef up my butt shape and see that and then this is also um, going to help here when I show you another trick so what we're doing here is we're going to model this thing out and eventually we're going to mirror it so I want to show you what happens when you mirror it and um, kind of how you're going to handle the butt once it does mirror so we're going to go ahead and select your geometry and I'm going to go ahead and NERM smooth it out. And we can see here that the butt's starting to take a little bit better shape here. Not, uh, not completely great, but uh, uh, starting to have some shape. But watch what happens. This is how we're eventually going to finish this mesh. We're going to select it and go into the mirror tool. And we're going to mirror it about X. And we're going to do this one, this time as an instance. And we're going to say OK. And I showed you guys earlier the difference between instancing and copying. And the beauty of this is, is that now I can sit here and model 
on my mesh and make edits and have the other side update with it. <laughs> so uh, pretty cool here. So I can make him do the Charleston. Dun, 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 dun. Um, and this is how you're going to model your mesh. So we're not going to connect this thing. We're not going to connect the other side ever until much later down the stream. And what I wanted to show you here, see how the, the butt is still kind of sawed in half? The guy looks like, um, you know, you can you can just basically saw him in half. It looks like an alien. Yeah, it doesn't look good. So what you're going to do here, there's a trick for this, is when we finish the, the model, we're going to just pull some of these vertices to kind of overlap each other. And that's going to basically give the impression of kind of like a clinched butt cheek, basically. Yeah, I don't recommend though doing that until the very end because what'll happen is you'll get that, that you'll get that thing kind of lost, and um, I don't know, it just it just becomes kind of yeah, it gets lost in the butt crack. That's right. <laughs> don't get it lost in there, dude. You do not want to fish that out. <laughs> All right. So uh, and again, we're kind of running out of edges here, so that's why we're not having a hard time getting shape. All right, so the next phase of this, before we start adding more edges and I teach you how to shape this thing a little bit better, what I want to do here is I want to extrude the arm. And maybe before we extrude the arm also, maybe one more shaping pass. So I say unhide all. I'm going to go into x-ray mode here. And I just want to look at this from the side. And I want to delete that extra half because I don't really want to look at that at this moment. And maybe I want to adjust some of these vertices to fit some of the flow of the muscles, the musculature of the model. So I'm going to turn off that NERMS preview. And in this case, this one comes up to the armpit, so I'm going to move that up a little bit. And then I'm going to move these guys down here where the pectoral is. And I'm going to move this one up and then this one kind of comes up because it forms that shape there. See that ledge from the pectoral into uh, the obliques and the back muscle. And so I just kind of want to get any flow going here that I can. Same thing here. I'm going to kind of pull these down to flow with the musculature of my actual subject. Same thing here. This one could probably come down a little. And just get a slight flow with these verts before I start putting the arm on. And that's probably about as good as I can do from this side. And then I just want to check that in my perspective view to make sure I didn't do anything stupid or wacky. And it looks good. Okay, so the next phase is to extrude the arm out. And as I said previously, the arm's going to extrude out from this slot here. So we're just going to go ahead and select that polygon and we're going to go ahead and pop into the orthographic front viewport and what do we think we're going to do? You bet you've got it. So we're going to go to extrude. Uh, it doesn't really matter what how I extrude it because I'm going to go ahead and get into vertex mode anyway. So I'm going to select these vertices here. This goes down like this. I need to turn this into x-ray mode so I can see through. I'm going to line these guys up to be more on top of each other. <laughs> and that's kind of the armpit, so that needs to be packed in kind of tight. I go back into uh, polygon mode, and I'm going to extrude this one more time. I'm going to accept it and then immediately go into vertex mode. And again, that vertex goes there. This one goes kind of to the top of the shoulder. Go back into polygon mode, extrude again, say accept, go into vertex mode, move these to here and this one to here. And so I'm creating that shoulder. All of those edges basically can make up the shoulder. You could pack these tighter if you wanted to. Um, I'm kind of keeping it a little bit looser because uh, I can always change that later. So I'm going to go back into polygon mode here and I'm going to say extrude. Go into vertex mode. And then now I'm just going to start referencing. So these uh, edges here are similar to these shoulder edges over here. And uh, now I'm going to mimic this one. So this one goes kind of right across the bicep. So I'm going to grab these. 
put them right here like so and then I'm going to go into polygon mode and I'm going to extrude again say accept go into vertex mode this one's pretty important because um, this is the beginning of the uh, bend point at the elbow so it's basically this edge set right here that I just put in and then the next one's going to go right at the bend so I'm going to say polygon and extrude go in accept it first go into vertex mode this one goes right at the bend where the elbow bends and then I go back into polygon mode and extrude accept it go into vertex and then this edge is this one right after the bend so I'm going to position these guys like so then I'm going to go back into vertex mode I'm sorry uh, polygon mode extrude one more time accept it go into vertex mode and then this edge set is this one right here so I'm going to put that there and there for the forearm and then I'm going to go into polygon mode again extrude again accept go into vertex mode and this one's going to come down here to make the opening for the wrist okay so that looks pretty complete at least from the front angle so now what we need to do is go check it out in the perspective view and if I turn off the x-ray and I unhide or hide unselect it we can see here that uh, that doesn't really look like an arm that's very boxy right so yeah it's like a total Lego arm right so what do you think we need to do here in order to resolve the we need to add some more edges, right? So we're going to go ahead and select edge mode. And I'm going to select the edge here at the front of the arm, and I'm going to say ring. And it's going to ring it all the way around, front to back. And then I'm going to go ahead and connect that. So I'm going to connect it one time, say OK. And then I need another set of edges in here because I don't really have enough uh, detail there also. So I'm going to ring that, and then I'm going to connect that as well. Okay, now that I have those extra edges added, I can actually start adding more shape. And let's hope this works. I'm going to try, I want to select these verts to these verts. And it works here. I don't know why it didn't work before. So a uh, little selection trick. If you select one vert and then shift select the next one, it'll select all the verts in between. And then you can just very quickly, I just want to round this out. So it's allowing me to do that pretty quickly. And I'm going to do the same thing from here to here. Pull these down, pull these in, and then the same thing underneath from here to here. I'm going to pull these in like so, like so, same thing here to here. So then I'm going to go in here and see how this thing's basically like a two by four mm -hmm. all the way down. This is all one dimension. So your arm definitely doesn't do that. Your arm tapers. So I need to add that taper in there as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I somehow I hit that squash button again. I hate that. What's the hotkey for I, I don't know. I need, I need to look it up so it I can. It should be um, hovering over in the There's a hotkey commands um, sheet inside the ref folder. You, you can see it. I'm sure it's on there. But I, I do that a lot. So. And then at that point, now that we've got the, the edges taken off, there's really no nothing else to do except for you. We're in point pulling mode. And so now we start actually sculpting our mesh. I'm going to knock down. We can pr definitely add another set of edges in here for the neck. So I'm going to do that. Say so connect. Oops. Nope. I need to ring it first. Now I'm going to connect it. So OK. I can scale this down slightly. 
Um, honestly, the, the, the back muscle goes into uh, the back of the neck. And so really, I only want to change the shape from the front portion here. So I'm going to leave those back guys alone. And it's these verts I want to pull in. The next thing we can do here is we have some faces here that we no longer need. So we can go ahead and delete those. And then the same thing at the base of the wrist. All right, and now it's all about shaping. So I'm going to go ahead and if you, there's always at the, the um, where the spine runs down the back, there's always a kind of a tight crease, especially on muscular people. And so I like to model that in. And it kind of stops right there. Sometimes it forms a dimple. Yeah, it does, like kind of right above there, but. I don't think I have enough edges to do that, so I'm just going to And then you can kind of see what I'm doing here. I really am a stickler for removing um, all those those hard edges that uh, are always present when you're when you're starting with a box. I'm going to pull those down a little bit. This is where the clavicle starts to come in. And then I can beef up the back side of the shoulder a little bit. Add a little bit of a bicep. Boys. Add a elbow, just to show the hint of the elbow. Okay. And then if we want to tighten up um, the pectorals here, we can do that. So that's like, that it's a dude. Did you not see those just modeled there? It's missing, a it's missing what? I did. It's missing a whole other half, man. That's why I was asking. Is it a guy? Is it a girl? I don't know. I'm going to unhide. At this point, you know, it's kind of pointless for me to explain what I'm doing. Um, I'm shaping here. So I'm grabbing these vertices here and I'm pulling them down. This would be an example of, you saw how earlier I pulled um, that reference plane mm -hmm. so that it wouldn't intersect the mesh. And now I want it to intersect the mesh because I only, only want to work on half of it. So I'm going to select the mesh here and now I want it to slice the guy in half because I really only want to be able to see the front of the chest here. So I'm moving that to my advantage. And then now I'm going to go ahead and start click dragging these points because I want to basically model the pectoral better. And I'm, notice I'm not marquee dragging because if I marquee drag, I'm going to pull the points behind. You can also turn off ignore back facing, but my experience with that is that um, it doesn't always work. So I just tend to use the, uh, the marquee drag or the uh, click pick. Okay. So I've basically modeled in um, the pectoral shape there. Why don't I go ahead and add some of this shape to this as well. Say OK here. And then I'm going to go in here. And uh, I want to kind of see how I'm doing NERMS wise. So I'm going to Alt X to get back to uh, regular view. I right click on the message, say unhide or hide unselected. 
And then I want to go ahead and get, do a NERMS preview of my mesh and see how I'm doing. <laughs> All right, so uh, now I'm going to keep going. And we, at this point, in order to get more and more detail into the shape, you have to actually start adding more and more edge loops, it's just like the hand, right? So this is your base mesh. You're right, it is androgynous. I could probably go either way with this right now. And that's because I don't have enough edge loops in here to define all the shapes completely. So that's where I'm at. So I want to go in here, and I'm going to go into turn off the Nerm Smooth, and if I want to start tightening up some of this detail, I've got to go in and select edges, and I've got to ring them, and then I've got to connect them, and then I can keep adding further and further shape. So in this case, that would probably be good for adding the detail um, in the obliques here. So if I wanted to do that, I could pull this over. And then I certainly am going to need more edges here, so I'm going to go in here to the center, and I'm going to say ring, connect. I can move that up. I probably want to connect that one more time. And now I'm starting to get enough edge loops in here to um, basically uh, keep defining my shape. So I'm going to grab these guys if I wanted to tighten up that pectoral. Make that more pronounced. This one actually comes in here, like so. And it's these that actually kind of protrude out and down. And then I could go ahead and add another set of edges here. So if I go in here to the ring and I connect. You want to be careful here, though, um, that you don't add too many edges. There is a point of diminishing returns. But I'm going to do it because I definitely want to beef up this peck a little bit here. And for every edge you add, you have to actually uh, make sure that you model the shape, uh, make it soft, basically. And if I'm going to do it around that set of edges, I think I also want to go ahead and add it here. So I'm going to go in here, I'm going to say ring, say connect, and then the same thing here, just for consistency sake, connect, and here, ring, connect, and we just keep, uh, we keep shaping. I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to ring this one out, connect, and now I can So that's basically it. This is where I want you to be for next week is keep your resolution of your mesh uh, similar, comparable to this. You can add a few more um, if you want to add a few more loops in here for, say, the clavicle. Um, I would accept that. But be careful not to over, um, over edge loop your mesh and have the thing get away from you, get out of control. So I'm going to ring it out here, and I'm going to connect it. So that's about as dense as I would go. And then what you want to do is once you do that, you're going to, you're going to continue shaping. You're going to basically get it to look right. You're going to add as much muscular detail as you can, um, basically without going. I want you to go any denser than what we have here at this stage in the game. And let's go ahead and just take a look at what we got here. So at this stage, I would go ahead and what mirror this guy. Mm -hmm. Make sure I do it as an instance. Mm -hmm. 
or a reference, either one works. And then we can see here that it's starting to definitely read more mail. And if I turn off the wireframe on Shada, And another thing you may want to do um, is if your mesh kind of gets this uh, faceted face look, I've shown you guys this before. We go in here to polygon mode and we can select it. And of course I have ignored back facing turned on so it didn't select them both. And I want to go in here and I want to go all the way down to the polygon smoothing groups. And I want to auto smooth this. I like to, to model faceted so I'm going to say auto. And then that helps me. That's what I like to see. If you'd like to see it smooth, you can also select them and turn this up to uh, like a 70 or a 60 or something and say auto smooth and that'll smooth it out. I prefer, honestly, this. I like to see it in faceted mode because I can visualize how it's going to look smooth. So there we go. And <coughs> this thing is uh, NURMS out, I think. Oh, no. Good. Okay, so I'm going to NURMS it out, take a look at it. Well, what is going well for this is that we have we have the nice pectorals that are starting to look reasonable. We've got the start of the obliques here. We've got a butt. We've got the the uh, small of the back running down the spine that's starting to look pretty natural. And then, of course, uh, if you don't want your guy to be a Ken doll, <laughs> uh, you could always, I'm going to go ahead and delete this other side for a second. Go in here to the crotch, and again, we'd have to add another edge loop, so I'll bring this out and say connect. Go in here to the vertex level, grab uh, these two, and pull those out a little bit. You don't have to sew these together, so that, that's kind of okay for it to be apart. So if you guys end up with something like this by next week, um, I'd be happy. All right? Good deal? I'm going to go ahead and save the scene, and I'll put that up on the reference folder for you guys so you can look at it. Cool. That concludes the lecture. Uh, good luck, and we'll see you next time.